Americans. We'll bring in retired Major General William Innert uh, of the U.S. Air Force, uh, also worked with the Army um, as well. I feel like, uh, General, we're sort of in that, and forgive the term, uh, fog of war in the beginning hours here. Well, of course, we're in the fog of war. The information is slow to come in, and, and uh, it's going to be uh, quite some time uh, before we really know the, the full nature and extent of what's going on here. Uh, but I think you can anticipate that there will be some type of follow-on attack in addition to these drones, uh, unless the Iranians are doing this simply uh, uh, as a, a show for their own, uh, really for their own uh, mass audience at home, uh, just to show that they've taken some action. Um, these these drones are not going to be uh, particularly effective against uh, the uh, Israeli defenses, uh, particularly if the Brits uh, and uh, the U.S. Uh, are additionally stepping up to shoot these things down. Yeah, you, you've got now, um, the Iranians at least said uh, they deem the matter concluded, meaning the Israeli assassination of one of their generals, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps general. Um, they view this concluded. Obviously, the Israelis view it differently. Uh, the Israelis in the past couple of minutes um, have now authorized, their war cabinet has authorized um, a retaliatory strike against uh, the Iranians. Let's just take a minute and, and game that out. Um, it will put up a map here. Um, you obviously have uh, the Israelis that have been doing this now and, and practicing for this since my time in the Middle East in 2010. Um, but you're talking about at least 1,500 miles uh, if they choose to use uh, their F-15s and their F-35s. Uh, the Saudis and the Jordanians now appear to be much more on the Israeli side, so that would be willing to give them access to their airspace. Uh, give us the possible response scenarios for the Israelis over the next uh, 12, 24 hours. Well, that's that's a, a very good question, and I'd hate to predict uh, what responses the Israelis will take. Uh, I'm sure that they have a, a targeting list. Uh, I'm sure that they have a, a list of, of uh, dream targets they'd love to take out, whether those be uh, uh, nuclear uh, production facilities, uh, Iranian uh, military bases. Uh, but, you know, when, when they took out the two generals, uh, they didn't strike Iran itself. They struck into uh, Syria uh, and uh, took out uh, the two generals at uh, a diplomatic uh, facility in, in Damascus, the capital of Syria. So uh, I think, though, that with the fact that uh, Iran has now uh, launched uh, missiles directly from uh, Iran at uh, Israel, we may well see an attack uh, by Israel directly in, into uh, Iran. And of course, the problem with this is that we're getting into a tit-for-tat situation, uh, and and uh, one strike uh, deserves a counter-strike. So where does it end? Uh, this certainly could uh, wind up provoking a much wider regional war. And, you know, I think... Yeah, no, uh, this, the, the, yeah that, that's obviously the word that we've been using over and over and over again, which is regional war and the possibilities um, of it. Uh, Jordan and the, and the Saudis have both uh, allowed U.S. forces uh, and possibly even Israeli forces to use their airspace to intercept the drones that are coming over from Iran. U.S. forces um, in the Middle East, as we said, that they've had um, a lot of warning uh, to ramp this up. The Iranians basically telegraphed it, but obviously U.S. and Israeli intelligence picked up on it. Um, General, just when you think about, um, and we'll, we'll sort of go back and forth in these maps, U.S. forces in the Middle East and then Iranian affiliates, Iraq and Syria are the two places that the Iranians have uh, the most uh, sort of assets and the most freedom of action there. Um, if you're U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria, I, I can't imagine um, them going to sleep tonight. Well, certainly they're 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 facing some hazards, uh, and uh, the Middle East has been a cauldron for for not just years, decades, uh, and it's certainly uh, not not at this point getting any better. Uh, you know, when when you mention the fact that uh, Jordan and apparently Saudi Arabia has allowed uh, uh, Israel and and the U.S. and perhaps the Brits to shoot down these uh, Iranian uh, drones over their airspace. Those are defensive measures, and I think uh, that um, they can certainly, uh, they'll certainly look far more favorably on defensive measures than they would on offensive measures 
if uh, Israel were to use their airspace to attack Iran. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.